What's up beautiful people, today we're going to be checking out Vivek Ramaswamy vs Andrew Cuomo. Let's get to it. Your position is absolute second amendment. People could carry concealed weapons. The real problem in this country when it comes to violent crime, because you and I share, I think, a genuine concern about the violent crime spike in this country. I think if we're serious about how to address that, there's two things we need to do. I understand they're controversial and I'm, I think we should have an open and honest discussion about it. We may agree to disagree, but I think the data is on my side here that many of the areas where you have the tightest gun laws are also the areas with the highest violent crime rates in the cities of this country. And so... Vivek, on guns, your position is absolute Second Amendment. People could yep. carry concealed weapons. Yes. Uh, you were in New York for a period of time. We had 481 mass shootings. The real problem in this country when it comes to violent crime, because you and I share, I think, a genuine concern about the violent crime spike in this country. I think if we're serious about how to address that, there's two things we need to do. I understand they're controversial, and I'm, I think we should have an open and honest discussion about it. One is more cops on the streets who are actually allowed to do their job without fear of being sued or looking over their shoulder. And number two, bring back mental health institutions in this country because we have a mental health crisis, not just by drugging people up with pharmaceuticals, that's not the solution, but even faith-based and other approaches that restore that sense of purpose and meaning that so many are missing. Yes, there were abuses. There were abuses in the past and we shouldn't repeat those mistakes at mental health and psychiatric institutions, but that shouldn't be the reason for shuttering them. And over the last, what, 25 years, over the period where we've seen the shuttering of those mental health institutions is exactly the inverse correlation we've seen Good. with respect to the I, rise in I violent got, crime. I got it. Let's mental yeah. health. We'll, we'll say for another time. But everyone has a gun. Everyone has an assault weapon, a form of felon. No background check. Has concealed the right to. Carry? Has the right to. And I do think concealed carry is important. Constitutional carry is important. You know, background checks non-politicized are absolutely a, a legitimate part of the process. But for what? As if they exist today. Former, if, if you can be a former felon and have a gun, mm -hmm. then the background checks are meaningless. Well, look, I think you and I, you know, may respectfully agree to disagree on this one. I think that I am a Second Amendment absolutist, and I think the data... We may agree to disagree, but I think the data is on my side here that many of the areas where you have the tightest gun laws are also the areas with the highest violent crime rates in the cities of this country. And so mm -hmm. that suggests to me that we're looking in the wrong place to address the violent crime problem. But it could just also be like, I'm not for or against anything here, but it could also be that these areas had high crime rates already. So having tight gun laws doesn't really have to do with anything. It could also be that. And we need to go to time-tested policies that do work, both in terms of effective policing and in terms of actual psychiatric and mental health institutions, and actually in communities where law-abiding citizens are able to use guns, or at least to own guns. That's something that actually deters many violent criminals from being able to mm -hmm. roam the streets okay. with guns as they do today. So yeah, I think we respectfully you know, disagree on that, but I do think that there's trade-offs to every policy, but this is the right trade-off that will most importantly secure liberty in this country, not only keep the government at bay, but even keep violent crime at bay. And I do think that the data does support that the cities with the tightest gun laws are the ones that tend to have the highest crime rates. Yeah, I hear you on that. But saying uh, law-abiding, yeah, law-abiding, which means a background check that eliminates felons, eliminates people with mental health issues. Uh, and then to say assault weapons that make it almost impossible for a police officer. You know, the police officers step in when they get a chance, which is normally when the person reloads. You have a magazine that has 20 bullets, 30 bullets. So, uh, so you, who wants to be the police officer who runs into that school? Mm -hmm. So, look, I think that y you and I are going to respectfully question. disagree on this one, even though I know we share the same objective of both making sure that we address the violent crime spike in this country. With due respect, and in, 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 as, as you know, if we wanted to get um, I'm, I'm excited for this to be the first of 
hopefully more conversations we have. If we had time for one more question topic after this, that'd be great. Uh, but to just close the loop on this one, the short answer is that case that you described is not a real case that presents itself very often compared to real life violence between a lot of violent criminals in cities who are breaking a lot of other laws, including themselves, not going through the proper process of the violent crimes they commit to the to the way they even whether or not they way they acquired their firearms. So I think that if we're actually going to restrict firearms, we're going to see more lawbreakers still continue to own guns while law abiding citizens don't. And the right answer, I think, is not removing guns from law abiding citizens, mm. but removing those who are psychiatrically ill and dangerous. Wait, that was a very good point. He stated there. So if you make or restrict the gun laws, the abiding citizens or the law abiding citizens cannot attain or acquire guns, but then the criminals can still go to the back black market and acquire weapons. So that doesn't, it does make sense. That was a good point. Yeah. I never thought of it that way, but he makes sense there. Dangerous and violent remove those people from their community, which is controversial. But I do think that if we're serious about taking on the crime epidemic, the violent crime epidemic in this country, that's where we're going to have to land. Yeah. Reinstitutionalization would be would be more than controversial. Mm -hmm. Well, that's everything. Well, let me know what you think about that. Um, with regards to these gun laws, I never really know where to lean on because I, I don't know, man. Like at the end of the day, guns kill people. No, people kill people, but guns would enhance, you know, make it quicker. So I never like advocate for using weapons of any sort, be it guns or even knife. And um, I heard in Canada there's a surging. Um, I think knife crime is surging right now in Canada. So even knives too is becoming a problem. How do you restrict a knife crime? Stop people from buying kitchen knives? <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's just a good people, bad people thing. I don't know how the government is going to work this out, but hopefully they're able to figure it out. Let me know if you agree with Vivek Ramaswamy. And if you have like a, like a, an alternative on what they can do, feel free to share in the comment section. But he did state a very good point, and the questions they asked him were very good questions. That being said, it's the end of this one. Smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.